it was designed and it is still designed today for the the plant-based, the plant-centric, the plant-forward, the vegan, whatever you want to call it. It's the people who aren't eating animal products because as we, you know, look at kind of these essential nutrients, and by the way, we call it a complement for that reason, um, as opposed to supplement being supplemental to what you're already getting in a plant-based diet. This is a perfect complement to those nutrients that come in abundance, right? Today, we're going to begin venturing into the world of commerce, and we begin with a business designed from the ground up to make the world better. My guest today is Matt Tolman, the co-founder of Complement, an eco-friendly company that understands how much consumers care about their health, the environment, animal welfare, and voting with their dollars. Now, Matt was eating a plant-based diet for two years when his health started deteriorating somewhat dramatically. Like, How could this happen when consuming one of the verifiably healthiest diets on the planet? Being committed to his life choice, he didn't give in when his doctor suggested that he had to start eating animal protein. Instead, he took two years and went deep into the research, finally determining that for a variety of reasons that we talk about on the show, including the health of our soil, the lack of sunlight that we get, and a variety of other reasons that even whole food plant-based vegans can benefit from a complimentary boost. Hence, the company Complement was born, and they have been rising like a phoenix ever since, making Fortune Magazine's list for one of the top 500 fastest growing companies. So regardless of what kind of diet you eat, I think you'll be inspired by Matt's passion for doing well by doing good and by helping plant eaters be healthy, strong, and robust. It's better for the planet, better for the animals, and better for our health and longevity to eat this way. So please take a minute to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and enjoy this conversation with Compliment co-founder Matt Tolman. Hi, Matt. <laughs> hey there. Hello. Thanks hey. so much for having me on. Blast from the past. It's Blast been too from the long. past. And it is so, so good to see you. You don't actually look any different. So that must be a testament to your. Uh, actually, you look, you look better. <laughs> you look happier. So um, that's probably so, true. Yeah. And I'm sure you're. Uh, your lifestyle is a huge part of that as well. So all good things that we want to get into discussing. And um, anyway, so just welcome welcome to the podcast. And um, actually, so full transparency, we, we know each other just because my daughter and your sister went to high school together and um, have been friends for a lot of years. But I think it's been maybe, I don't know, you had no kids and now you've got three. So I don't know how long it's been since I've seen you. Um, but I do know that you did not have the company complement this, you know, like, a, I don't know if you call it a vegan supplement company. We can talk exactly about what it is. But I don't, when did you start that? What year? Do you know? Officially, um, I think we, we started work on uh, the first product in 2017. So gosh, I think it's oh. been six, seven years. But, okay. um, you know, it was really, uh, so, so first of all, thank you so much for, for having um, us and I don't want to dive into you know my my whole story too quickly, so I'll I'll just leave it at that, um, and uh, and go ahead and follow your lead in terms okay. of, of the right. questions. Okay, well, good. Then I'll just tell you that the way I heard about Compliment, uh, which is the name of your business, is that, uh, and I don't know if you even know this, but I was taking a course from a uh, Dr. Uh, Roseanne Oliveira. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Do you know who she is? That's where she I recommended don't, I don't your vitamins. Actually. Okay, well, she's. She, I have you should to write know that about. down and reach out and, and, I'll, I'll, and I'll send tell you her a, thank you. A, yeah, I'll send you a link to her because she's the founder of Plant Based uh, Life, which is a huge foundation which shows people how, it teaches people how to eat very healthily um, as as a vegan or whole food plant based you know person, whatever your choice of words is. Um, she's a geneticist and she works for UC Davis as a, I think she's actually now working to um, work on the curriculum for doctors for how to build longevity and healthy lifestyle, you know, into 
because doctors, as we know, have not had that that education about how to bring lifestyle and diet into into treating patients. So she's working on that curriculum. So she said, so I was taking this course from her, which was actually way over my head. It was just about how to eat, eat uh, healthily as a, as a vegan. And, um, she was like, no sugar, no salt. She's very, very strict. So it was, but it was a lot of science. It was pretty challenging stuff actually. And she, that's the first time I, I think it was, I don't know what year it was. It's been four or five years at the most. And that's when she said, um, you really, as if you're not eating animal products that you really do need to supplement with certain things. And of course it was like heresy, you know, because it's like, no, no, no. Vegans are like, you can't, it has, it's a perfect diet. There's nothing wrong with it, you know, which ignores so much of just life and soil and everything. But that's the first time I heard of it. And you were one of the companies that she recommended. So that's when I discovered it and didn't have any idea it was your, your company, but I just fell in love with it because of all the social good you do, all the environmental good that you do. And I just kind of felt like it was a company that had soul like and, and heart and cared about the customer. And so I did, it was a couple of years in before I realized that you had anything to do with it. So anyway, <laughs> that was, that was a great discovery on my part. <laughs> that, that is awesome. And, um, thank you so much for, for the kind words and, um, you know, I'll have to reach out to, to this doctor and, yeah. and thank her for, for the free promotion. <laughs> well, yeah. And she, she, I mean, that's like, it's been a few years, so she's been on the bandwagon for a while. You should know about her. <laughs> I should. I should. Yeah. So anyway, I've been wanting to talk to you about getting into sort of the details with the company and how it works and, and, you know, how you started and what your thinking was. But, um, the other reason, of course, that I like it is that you're supporting. It's not just a business that I'm the the topic of this podcast is how we change the world. And business has not always been thought of as one of the ways that that has been happening. You know, lately it has in the last 10, 20 years, people are more concerned about triple bottom line, bottom line and all those things. But I don't yeah. still don't see it very often. So, well, I, I would actually challenge you on that respect, which is to say that, um, Business is probably the number one way we change the world. It's just that historically it's been negative impacts, right? And that yeah, more recently. Yeah, I stand corrected on the terminology, but yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously I'm making a joke, but, um, you know, I mean, that's the reality, right? Is that, you know, the, the um, impact that the economic engine can have is probably only outweighed by, you know, the arm of the government, Right. Um, because it didn't, you know, either way, <clears throat> it has to do with um, how much resources, right? Manpower, woman power, money can you throw at a problem mm -hmm. or at a solution or at a change, be it good or bad. Right. And so that's the reason why I've always chosen to focus on for profit enterprise. Uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> because while many of those businesses at various times and including very recently, um, are not generating any profit, <laughs> um, right. you know, if you can create an economic engine that scales your ability mm -hmm. to touch that many more lives to, to make a, an impact in various ways, um, just goes up exponentially. I just, yeah, you know, in every business, sure. I mean, I'm, I'm on the board of a, uh, farm animal sanctuary, right. And my number one um message is that it, it's a business you know we have stakeholders we have value that we provide even if sanctuary is a business in other words it's just a non yeah because business, if you don't right. if you don't look at it as a business you get into all sorts of trouble you know because mm -hmm. you start to misunderstand your relationship to donors and to other stakeholders and to sponsors mm -hmm. right yeah. and so mm -hmm. and you start making decisions based on fuzzy math um right but if you look at it as an operation that has to be sustainable mm -hmm. which generates resources at the top which spends those resources according to create this value and then hopefully has something left over or else you're eventually going to go out of business right and so it's sure. that thinking anyway so not to go off on a tangent but i think it's a wonderful mission that you have here to highlight you know how we change the world and, and i certainly would encourage any listener to really think hard about those businesses that they support, Absolutely. you know, and what businesses that can create because the economic engine 
um, is a great tool for change. Well, and of course, as we look at the environment, we have to look at business as the solution and, and consumers supporting those business as an equal part of that solution. So obviously that's one of the things that you do in your business. So, well, let's, before we get too far into compliment and, and what it does and, and how you do benefit the, the environment and this and social justice and a lot of things. Um, let's just talk about you and how, how you got on this journey in the very first place. Cause I'm pretty sure if I know you, I know your family and I'm pretty sure you grew up eating meat and uh, dairy. Is that, isn't that true? Yeah. 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 So what, um, when did you make a switch? Yeah. So uh, in college, um, I oh, uh, lost a uncle to cancer um, and through that process, he was given a, to, to be as brief as possible, a, a terminal cancer diagnosis mm -hmm. that um, he decided to reject and say, you know, I'm going to find what, you know, I, I think are labeled alternative mm -hmm. means of healing. Um, uh, things like, I mean, the ran the gamut, but one of the mo core interventions was a raw vegan diet. Mm -hmm. um, and totally remove alcohol, totally remove processed foods, meat, dairy, and the like. Um, and he saw tremendous improvements. Um, mm -hmm. And even outliving their diagnosis by a long shot. And it was a tragic ending, unfortunately, because eventually um, he was convinced to add in chemotherapy to that regime. He oh, wasn't eligible to chemotherapy when they first made that diagnosis. He said, look, there's nothing I can do for you. Um, he was exposed to Agent Orange uh, during Vietnam, wow. and so he had cancer all up and down his body, and, and it was misdiagnosed for a long time. Back mm. pain, oh, here's your back pain pills, right? Wow. Like eyesight, stronger glasses, you know, mm. all these different things until eventually they couldn't ignore it, and they found it had spread all over his body. Mm. And so they said, look, there's no hope for you. There's no chemotherapy to be offered, you know. You're on your own, get your affairs in order. After a period of time, I think it was maybe six months, they actually showed that the cancer tumors were shrinking. And so with that, the oncologist said, oh, well, let's give it the double whammy. Let's do chemotherapy oh, as my well. Goodness. And within a matter of weeks, he fell into a coma. I mean, chemotherapy is the deadliest poison that yeah. you would ever inject into your body, right? Um, the idea of chemo is that you'll kill everything and hopefully the human will survive and then and rebuild. And sometimes they do. Everything... I mean, there are people course, who have, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, look, I mean, but of course uh, it's immunotherapies, a chemotherapies, mm -hmm. surgeries, yeah. like I'm, I am not one to say that you can cure cancer with your mind alone. Although there are people out there who believe that. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that you should try everything, you right. know, and I am certainly not, a doctor and I try not to play one on the internet either, <laughs> but that's his story. And it always stuck with me um, because it made me rethink, you know, uh, the way we eat in a profound way. And through that process, kind of in solidarity, a lot of members of the family hopped on the vegan oh, really? bandwagon. Oh, it didn't, didn't know keep, that. Um, yeah, including the family members, you know, um, hmm. it didn't stick uh, fully. I was in college in Texas, um, mm -hmm. but enough of it always resonated with me, right? Like ground yeah. beef, right? I haven't had ground beef since I was like a teenager because like mm. the concept alone was just so yeah. revolting, right? Yeah. And like, yeah. but I was very much like the health nut, men's health reader, right? Whereas mm. like fish and broccoli is like mm -hmm. as healthy as you can get steamed yeah. chicken, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and eventually again, like that kind of, you know, I, I moved away from that progressively in college. And then really um, the thing that got me was supporting a loved one, uh, my grandfather and what would become end of health um, care. End of life. End of, end of life yeah. well, care, thank you. And end of health. And, uh, yeah. yeah, and it was, it was again, it's just a series of, of oversights and um, what I would call medical errors. Um, mm -hmm. The death certificate actually says that he died of heart disease and malnutrition. Now, mind you, he was in a hospital setting for 30 days. So the fact that he died of malnutrition is pretty intriguing. Revealing. Um, but it really 
Yeah, it really made me understand, right? Because like, if you go to a hospital, particularly in the middle of the country, Kansas, mm-hmm. right? Like the foods that they are serving in this hospital. Yeah, it's every, probably. It's in, um, it's in every city. Yeah, so I, you can't. Yeah, do, you get a heart. Said, you have a heart surgery, and you get out, and there's a cheeseburger on your plate. Yeah, I mean, it's. Don't disagree. So, yeah. and that was. And so that was the the kind of aha moment where in that process I was like okay I'm, I, I reread the China study and just started pulling on that thread and just overnight mm-hmm. it just made so much sense to me and we can get into the benefits I'm sure your your listeners know about a plant based diet but that was ten oh. years ago almost exactly ten years ago um, and you know now I've got three vegan children and, you know, uh, um, haven't, haven't looked back, um, and obviously dedicated, you know, um, most of our time resources and everything else to kind of spreading this, this, uh, movement. Cause I really think it is, you know, mm. not only the best thing for human health, but also as you know, you know, for the lives of, of billions of animals, um, that are, harmed every year, uh, as well as, of course, the environmental degradation that, you know, has, will, will create untold suffering in the future if we don't get ahead of that. Mm -hmm. Well, already is actually, when you think about, (laughs) I mean, there's already climate refugees all over the planet from, you know, uh, desert, desertification, I never can say that word, but you know, we're already there as far as climate change. So yeah, there's obviously, I think I, I don't know if most people know about the benefits of not eating. Do you call yourself vegan? Is that the terminology that you prefer or do you care? Um, I am vegan, right? Like this sweater mm-hmm. is made out of probably polyester and cotton um, target. And uh, um, however, uh, I when in talking in a sort of nutrition setting, I, I focus on saying plant-based, mm-hmm. right? Because as you know, Vegan speaks to a lifestyle, right, and includes right. say clothing, right, right. or includes right. Might not you know, wear leather a, or yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I think you know when we talk about this stuff, is my day job and focus on what people eat, right? And I'm mm-hmm. trying to get right. people to eat and understand right. that like that's not necessarily a vegan lifestyle, um, and vegan can have a connotation that turns a lot of people off. And it does. So yeah, we're trying to get yeah. people to eat more fruits and vegetables, mm-hmm. um, not Whatever necessarily, you want to call it. Yeah. yeah, not necessarily, you know, uh, embrace a fully vegan lifestyle, you know, obviously our, our work with the sanctuary is a different story, right? We get people right. on, 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 uh, at our sanctuary to engage with these sentient beings and, and they become vegan, but they're two different things, right? <laughs> So, yeah, that is interesting. And I did actually want to ask you more about your, about your children and, and how that all works. But maybe just for the sake of, of listeners, we should, I want to jump into, maybe we'll come back to that. So I want to jump into what your company does and, and how you do it, because you just brought up a first question, which it's a supplement essential. It started anyway. It really expanded since the beginning, but as a, at first it was strictly supplements, I think. And um and you just said something that made me wonder, is it just for people who are plant, uh, plant-based plant eaters or can anyone plant. benefit from these supplements? Anyone can benefit from them because these are the core nutrients that are difficult to derive or nearly impossible to, to derive from the typical food sources that we're consuming on a Western diet. Anyone can benefit Mm -hmm. from that, for sure. It was designed and it is still designed today for the the plant-based, the plant-centric, the Mm plant-forward, the vegan, whatever you want to call it. It's the Mm -hmm. people who aren't eating animal products because as we, you know, look at kind of these essential nutrients, and by the way, we call it a complement for that reason, um, as opposed to supplement being supplemental to what you're already getting in a plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. This is a perfect complement to those nutrients that come in abundance, right? So you're getting all the vitamin C that you need, right? Um, But you're not going to get some of these other nutrients that are either hard to derive for some reason, um, like blocking agents like phytates in the case of zinc, um, or they're really hard to find, like in the case of selenium, right? Like you can definitely get a daily dose of selenium through Brazil nuts every day, Mm -hmm. but like, 
how many people actually eat Brazil nuts every right. single day, right? Yeah. Um, and then there's, you know, different stories for another category, which is they just don't come in plants, period, end of story. There's zero plant-based source of like uh, of long chain fatty acid. It's an omega-3, uh, one's called DHA and one's called EPA. They just don't exist in plants. They come from algae. And the way humans generally derive them is by eating fish that eat the algae. And fish deposit those fatty cells in their um uh, in, in their flesh. And if you consume the fish, you're getting omega threes that way. Mm -hmm. We obviously go directly to the source and derive that oil from the algae, right? So um, the fish would the be case. eating the algae, right? Is that how exactly. the fish are getting right. it? Yeah. The, the so fish just... don't create it endogenously. They're, yeah. they're consuming the algae, right? Like you're just now, sk you're the skipping the middleman. Right. Well, it turns out the middleman acts as a sieve and absorbs everything that they eat or swim in. So mm -hmm. in the case of like nuclear waste, um, Mercury. <laughs> you know, exactly. Yeah. Heavy metal, yeah. heavy metals, got, you know, microplastics, right? Like, so, so there's a purity component for sure in that as well. Not to mention the environmental degradation that we see with the fishing industry and bycatch mm -hmm. and uh, turtles right. and sharks and coral right. reefs right. and everything else that gets destroyed, you know, in the name of getting some omega threes, it's, it's a, it, it is an inefficient process to be sure. So we go straight to the source, which is algae. Um, can I, and can then, I just ask know, a question yeah. about that for you? Go, doesn't yeah. algae absorb all those other things as well? Like, wouldn't it also absorb, um, I don't know, possibly mercury or, or we, nuclear, whatever you uh, uh, <laughs> nuclear uh, waste. It's a great question. So, so our algae doesn't come from the ocean. Our algae oh. comes either from self-contained bioreactors so wow. like brewing beer, right? Giant metal vats of yeah. salt water and oh. algae and, and oh. sunlight, right? Huh. Um, or from salt water ponds, like in our case, um, in New Mexico and West Texas, hmm. where it's just, you know, it, it's self-contained, it's monitored, it's nothing but rainwater. And, um, and obviously we recycle as much as we can. It's a very, very efficient process because essentially hmm. the inputs are, you know, salt, algae, which then grows and multiplies, right? Mm -hmm. And water, and then you drain it, squeeze all the algae for the oil, right? And then put it back in with more salt and you huh. can reuse the water. And I it's did a really not know that. Process. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so yeah, we're not trolling the ocean for, for algae because um, <laughs> okay. you're right. It would probably know. Yeah. Uh, it would probably derive the same same challenges. So, mm -hmm. so again, there's like kind of those three categories, right? There's just stuff that you're not going to absorb adequately for any number of reasons. You know, gut dysbiosis, blocking agents like phytates. If you don't rinse your your beans and legumes, like you're consuming the zinc for sure. But how much of that zinc actually becomes bioavailable is a it, you know, is a question mark, right? Because you're also consuming it with an agent that binds to the same receptors called a phytate, and you're not actually getting the zinc to your cells. So there's these different explanations, if you will, for why mm -hmm. for these nutrients are so, um, well, they're, they're nutrients of concern, right? Um, mm -hmm. And B12 is the one that we've all heard about, right? And B12 sure. comes from soil bacteria. And it's really laughable when someone says that I'm just going to eat dirty vegetables, right? Because like, First of all, uh, you're not. I, I believe you know? that for a long time, but actually, I did I that for a long time. Yeah, I know. Well, I know. Gone so through all I, the stages. <laughs> yeah. So, so did I. Yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. I spent. Yeah, I know. I believe you. The origin story of this whole understanding is the fact that I spent the first two-ish years on a vegan diet with zero supplementation, mm -hmm. and then yeah, you know my nails were literally you know peeling off. I had hmm. horrible psoriasis. I went to the doctor, I got a blood test. The doctor essentially said, you're killing yourself. You have like rampant levels of inflammation. You need to eat fish. You probably need to eat red meat. You're going to be low in iron. You're blah, blah, blah. Really? Right? And because I, that's not everyone's experience for sure, right? I and mean, that's... Definitely. Some, it I depends mean, on the individual? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Okay. I mean, I think that there's yeah. a tremendous number of... of um, factors, right? Um, I mean, I know I, I've got friends who are 30 year vegans, right? And they, yeah. you know, they, they do nutritional yeast. And 
I haven't seen their blood test. I can't comment, right? I'm like, but yeah. they've, you know, but I know way they more s- former vegans who oh. couldn't maintain the lifestyle oh, that I see. say my hair started thinning and mm-hmm. I it was low energy. I couldn't do the training I wanted for this half marathon because I just couldn't get out didn't of bed. I, you know, exactly. Like my, 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 my menstrual cycle stopped, right? Like my, my doctor found this issue, right? Like I, and so again, I, I don't think mm. any diet is perfect, mm-hmm. right? I don't think any diet individually speaking is um, uh, applicable to the broad masses of human, right? Cause like we all have different microbiomes. We have different, uh, you know, goals. We have different priorities. We have different access, different to ages, different, foods. different yeah, different parts of the world. Age-based eating, you know, by the way, is a whole area that I've focused a lot about because, like, if you just look at protein intake, most people out there just throwing out numbers like 0.38 uh, grams per pound, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, well, you know, my kids at four years old need a very different number of grams of protein, right? And then, like, then yeah. a 22-year-old who's body lifting or body weight training, mm-hmm. uh, um, you know, to a 35 year old triathlete to a 55 year old who's trying to prevent sarcopenia wasting away yeah, disorder. Yeah. Right. Like, and, yeah. and by the way, none of that actually addresses like, you know, the amino acids, which are the b- building blocks of proteins and actually how your body operates with that stuff. So don't, don't get me started. I don't think that there's one diet that just blanket, like every single person could eat, you know, right. the exact same foods. Or maybe right? even that um, the same person could eat throughout their lives. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And I think there's a whole um, precision nutrition personalization topic that we get into, but I've been talking for too long, but that, that touches a little bit on no, the no, origin no. story. And it's interesting. And so, because, yeah. So is that, that's what led you to say, I've got to figure out a way to supplement my diet yeah, or complement my diet. Maybe I'm fairly, fairly pig headed. And I had done, I mean, I've read um, pro, pro, nearly every book out there of mm. reputable publishing sources. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just didn't ring true to me. I'm like, how could this be? How could I be sick? What didn't ring? Oh, because they said that vegan, I talking about vegan books? From, exactly. Oh, Well, okay. no, both, both actually. Okay. So when I, when I first went, um, I was really uh, lucky to have... Um, sold a company. And so I had about two years to just read and research uh-huh. and figure this stuff out. It was right after I lost my grandfather. And I was so um, confused by like, how could it be that like, if if all you had to do is eat a plant based diet, and that was going to make you healthy? Right? How could that like, that's like the greatest you know, discovery, like, uh, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I mean, or, yeah. or whatever you want to call it, like the greatest cover up in history. Like, how could oh, this be? Looking this it from the other way. Right, right. Yeah, like this can't possibly be true. Right. And I really, I mean, like any good um, scientific process, you have to seek out disproving your hypothesis. Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah. I really wanted to. I, first, I mean, I, I yeah. didn't have any horse in the game. I wasn't, I wasn't vegan at that time. I, I, was aspiring, I guess, but for totally so selfish reasons, I wanted mm-hmm. to know what is actually the best way for humans to eat. And so I read everything. I read the blood type diet, the South Beach diet. Oh, the, okay. I mean, I went really yeah. deep into like Alzheimer's research and like cellular senescence, like and mm. then all the way to the other side of like mind body connection and and yogic and ayurvedic and and i came out with the understanding that like actually a plant-based diet is the healthiest way to eat Mm -hmm. or as i like to say it's kind of like uh churchill said about democracy you know he said something to the extent of like um it's it's the best you know it's the worst government you know but it's the best that we have so far right right yeah exactly (laughs) you know that's but I don't I feel, feel I don't, plant-based. You, do you still feel that way about plant-based? Because I don't feel that I, way at I all just, about plant-based. <laughs> no, look, I think yeah. um, I, I think it's a way that I can describe that it ain't easy, right? Especially yeah. it ain't easy to change 
And I think change, it's easy to be, but it's not easy to change to. Yes, I would agree. Well, I would, I would challenge that. I think that you have to, it depends on where you're at, right? Like raising vegan kids in society, right? Very easy. challenging. And I know you've, yeah. you've done it. I don't remember. No, when no, they raised kids, me. Uh, they, it exactly. was the other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, they, they, yeah, they so, Jesse's introduced me to veganism. I did not yeah. try to, in fact, I tried to raise a vegetarian and because Jesse was vegetarian from the time she was very young for 18 years before I joined ship joint, you know, joined yeah. it. And, um, it was extremely upsetting and challenging as because I didn't agree with it. So that made it even harder, but I, I understand the challenges. They go to birthday parties, they go to this, they go to that, their friends come over. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, yeah, I, I remember like first, uh, my oldest is four. And so he just finished his first year in school and he went to summer school first, uh, or summer camp, like in yeah. country, right? Yeah. Um, it's barely school, even as yeah. it is. Um, and it was right around the 4th of July. I was like two weeks into it and they were making, um, American flags. And so they took a graham cracker, which is in itself like highly processed <laughs> carbohydrates and sugar. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and they covered it in icing, which is at best pure sugar, at worst pure sugar combined with palm oil corn and syrup. dairy, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, or corn syrup. Yeah. Um, and then it was like M and M's to do the stripes, right? And like the stars. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, you put a graham cracker with icing and M and M's, and you gave it to a bunch of four and five year olds, yeah. three to yeah. five year olds. Like, yeah. how this like? how is this legal you know like, <laughs> exactly yeah you know, and like, how like, it's like, also par for the course which is the other thing it's not unusual like that's what happens right? every day of the year in every school it's it's everywhere so yeah. that's not even necessarily about veganism that's also about just pure nutrition which is a whole just going to a whole nother level there's just no what we do to kids yeah. is unbelievable so but yeah we no, look, I, mean, I just saw uh, uh, yeah, but I think that's why I say that it ain't easy. Um, yeah, and I, right. and I think it's important that we acknowledge that, um, okay, yeah. it, it is easy or as it goes on. I mean, I'm 10 mm -hmm. years in most people, yeah. cause we've done a lot of surveys on this. We've talked to a lot of people about this. Like most people last between two and three years, just the reality. Oh, is that right? You know? Is that right? Like I there are far more former vegans and there are vegans today hmm. right and it's because of all these different elements and we can get into that if you'd like to go there you know from from regulatory and subsidy policy stuff i mean they just the american association of dietetics or somebody maybe it was the national institutes of health just published something trying to get um chocolate milk out of school because of a high sugar content and mm -hmm. we live in a society with 74 percent of adults who are obese or overweight with like one out of four kids who are already obese or out of overweight. One out of five is obese, right? Like it's really, yeah. really like everyone should agree with getting high sugar milk out of schools. Right. But, and yet, you know, the milk there, or the, what is it? The uh, dairy, dairy association. farmers association yeah. of America, right? Like, of course they're all over it. Right. Like, uh, um, uh, you know, schools are somehow lobbying for it. Like, and it's just, it's crazy. So anyway, not to go off on, on a tangent, but I do think that it's important for us to acknowledge. And, and that's, you know, just to title back our mo mission, right? It's like the strength of our movement relies on the strengths of the individuals in that movement. And the of more course. that we can do to make them feel great, to look vibrant, to have high energy, we're going to grow the movement. Cause they're our mm -hmm. best billboards sure. and they're going to feel yes. good and they're going to yeah. keep going. Right. And if like they're if not have... getting heart disease and diabetes and all the things that you're getting from our diet, right. yeah, if, that, if that to have... me is the biggest advertisement. Exactly. Yeah. If you have a bunch of vegans who are withering away and their hair is falling out and they're mm -hmm. going to the doctor and they're saying, I don't feel good. Help me. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, yeah. it's going to undermine the foundation on which we're trying to build, you right. know? So anyway, I'll, I'll I'll get off the soapbox. <laughs> well, no, I mean it's not it's not a soapbox. It's your it's your reason for living. I mean it's what you do twenty four seven, whether it's with your family or with your business or with your own intake, you know, whatever you eat. And so it's 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 not a soapbox. It's a full life, 
full on, you know, way to be in the world. So I, you know, I, I respect it. And I, I expect that you're raising your kids that way. I, you know, it's, it is a challenge. And, and I would agree with you. I, I think if you're alone, if you're making your own meals and all that, and you're in your own element, like I'm, I'm in, um, I told you I'm in Belize right now. I'm on an Island in Belize. And I used to eat greens every single morning before I came here for like the last, you know, I'm an Esselstyn uh, follower. <laughs> so I, I, you know, really a lot of greens and I can't get, I mean, it's so expensive here and fruit is so expensive here. Like to get on an Island, I think might be the biggest thing. And, yeah. and every, there's just packaged foods everywhere. So yeah, here it has been a challenge. If I get beans, they've got meat in them and it's not like there's a vegan restaurant or a whole foods or anything else. So yeah, I'm not, I would never say that it's easy, but once you're, I guess, in a rhythm and you, the hardest part for me is getting other people to, accept it like in your family and and in your you know holidays and all that kind of or you, or you go out that's that to me has been the most challenging but over yeah. the years maybe that's more recently as a, as yeah. a, as the as the person who used to do the you know make the prime rib and the turkeys and all that and all of a sudden it comes to a screeching halt for the whole bigger family there's like it's a like a shock wave you know and so that for me was a hard part to go through but but so let's get back though to so how you started your company and 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 how you run your company because that's equally as important as the subject of not eating animals is um, and dairy you know is to the whole conversation that we're having and the whole business that you do and the whole way we yeah. live our lives. Um, also, the way that you show up for that company is so important. So I want to make sure we have plenty of time to to delve into like the environmental concerns and things that you pay attention to in this business. So you just decided then, I guess, I mean, just to continue with the story of how you got the business off the ground was that you did all the research and then just said, okay, there are no vegan, because I don't yeah. know if there were supplements for a vegan diet back, not many uh, compared there to weren't. now. There weren't. Yeah. So um, for your own had... purposes, even you said, let's, yeah. let's and, develop and something. Yeah. You know, in, in my personal philosophy around, um, you know, business models and, uh, and new business generation, as well as, you know, kind of the, uh, investment opportunities that we look at, you know, um, I encourage people to scratch their own itch. Um, mm -hmm. if you are your own customer, if you have a problem and you want to solve it, um, that's where the best companies yes. I think come from. Yeah. And yeah. so that's all it was. You know, I, I was pigheaded enough to say, no, I've done the research. I believe a plant-based mm -hmm. diet is the healthiest way to eat. This mm -hmm. doctor is wrong, you know? Um, yeah. And, uh, but I wanted to prove it. I wanted to prove it to him. I wanted to prove it to mm -hmm. myself. And so I went back and I looked hard and, you know, Esselstyn, I've, I mean, I'm privileged to call most of these authors, my friends, and I've okay. asked them directly. Um, and a lot of them still don't believe that you need to, supplemented plant-based diet. And mm -hmm. I think that is dangerous um, mm -hmm. because again, I've just, I've talked to so many people. I've gone through it myself. Like there's absolutely no harm, you know, to, to taking, I mean, that's what food is, right? Like you are, you are putting nutrients into your body. Hmm. So yeah, I'm why not that. be thoughtful about what nutrients just ain't coming into your body. They just aren't right. Like because yeah. we have degraded so, the hmm. soil you know, for instance, through modern agricultural practices, right? So like the right. amount of iodine of life. Yeah, right. The amount of iodine in our soil today is not where it was 50 years ago. And so that's why we fortify salt with iodine, you know, right. And so because otherwise, we'd all have thyroid issues. And, you know, right. Um, no, and, and people don't complain about that salt, typically having iodine exactly, in some light, but exactly, because no, we, well, we all know Esselstyn's not but, eating the salt either, but <laughs> right. Um, and just, uh, just to show you, I mean, you're saying that in your, in your experience, you needed something else. So it sounds like some people need something else. And some people, I mean, most of the world, most of the people living in the United States right now are probably deficient in something, no matter what they're eating, right? No matter what kind of yeah. diet they're following. If anyone were to do the blood work and look at everything, they'd say, yeah, you are deficient in this. So yeah. I think it's very, a little bit short-sighted of people, um, all due respect to all the people that are the trailblazers of this movement to say that you don't need it because you did need it. And I'm the same way with salt. Oh. I have to have salt. I tried to go three days without salt and I was 
couldn't get off. I, I was crawling. Like it literally, my body and my family's body all need salt. It's just a fact. So yeah. different bodies need different things. Well, yeah. And I think if you are thoughtful about the clinical research and then you go do your own testing, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have to have this philosophical debate. Like just go no, test. Just, it's a fact. Yeah. It's, just, I mean, we, it's factual. We, we now offer at home blood tests. It's a simple finger prick. We can test up to 11 different biomarkers, right? Like it's relatively inexpensive considering people get surprise bills from their doctor for $800 for some testing. Mm. Like, and right. we include the, the dietitian consultation to help you understand these things as well as um, the personalized nutrient packets that um, I don't have that on me because I just took my in this before we got on, but um, that you might need, right? And like, we don't have to debate it because we know like there's incredibly right. rigorous science that suggests that if you have uh, circulating levels of omega-3s in the optimal range, which is between eight and 12%, right? Okay. Um, your all-cause mortality meaning death by any reason, goes down precipitously. And that connection between all-cause mortality, death, and omega-3s is as closely correlated as smoking cigarettes and exercise. It's like no one will disagree that exercise is good for you. It will help you live longer. No one disagrees that smoking is bad for you. It will make you die sooner. Mm -hmm. the, love, the, 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 the relationship between those is as strong as omega-3s wow. and death. So, like, why are we debating this? Just go check your levels. If you're low well, they're not, omega-3s. But those people aren't – well, they're not saying don't take omega-3s, though, are they? I mean, because they're saying take flax. See, they may say take it in a nat more natural way. Well, I don't speak for other people. I can just speak for me, which is, mm -hmm. like – why mess around with this stuff? Um, I will just address that one common misconception, which is um, flaxseed oil, walnuts. Um, these have an omega-3 form called ALA, mm -hmm. um, not DHA and EPA. So it's a totally separate nutrient. And um, some people say that um, some people, based on a genetic test that you can get, mm -hmm. can convert that. But it's about like <laughs> two to three percent of the population that can convert it efficiently, and most people are converting it at a very low level. And so, what you know, if you look at the science and you ask yourself, like DHA is critical for brain health. Like it's literally like a material amount of your brain matter is mm -hmm. these fatty acids, right? Mm -hmm. So like. Why would you mess around with this stuff? Like your yeah. cardiovascular, your stroke risk, your cerebral vascular, Alzheimer's, all these things are benefited by having a higher level of omega-3s. If you're not eating fish, I, I you know, again, I can just provide people with that. no, that's my, interesting. my view. Interesting. You're not going to have those circling levels. By the way, we've tested now thousands of vegans, and I can tell you, your levels are not high. They're just not. <laughs> Okay. Well, I don't know what their argument for is about not taking it, but maybe, maybe, I don't know. I, I don't want to surmise what the thinking is, but anyway, I'm already on board, so you don't have to convince me. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah. was like, why not have a little insurance if it's not, you know, as long as it's doing no harm. Um, and so like, actually, why don't we get into the, uh, some of the, the rigor with which you um, create these, these, I don't. I keep. I don't know if I should call them supplements or compliments. Um, Th thank you for the it, distinction. You know, I, yeah. I like I like compliments. You know, yeah, I do too. But I don't. I don't know if it's caught on as a generic word yet, like Kleenex as. So, but we, we can work on that. Supplement works too. I like All that right. aspiration though. Yeah, well. Kleenex is my goal, right? <laughs> it's a good one. Um, but yeah. so you, but you are pretty careful with your third. Very careful, I'd say, right with your third party verification of the purity of it and the, you know, where you get them and do, you put yeah. a lot of effort into that area of it. Yeah, I mean, I, so let me, let me address that, but also, again, I'm not going to surmise why other people hold other opinions that, that is beyond yeah. um, what I'm capable of doing, but I can just suggest that there's good reason to have, 
you know, I mean, there's a lot of snake oil out there. Um, there is, and I think yeah. some of the concerns, right, is like um, taking these mega doses of multivitamins every single mm -hmm. day. That mm -hmm. is not a natural um, way to put nutrients in your body. That does not exist in, in mm -hmm. nature, right? Our bodies evolved in periods of uh, famine, right? Mm -hmm. Like literally periods of fasting are good to uh -huh. reset certain uh. hormonal and, mm -hmm. and epigenetic and all sorts of different systems in mm -hmm. your body. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's well-reasoned opinions that some of these um, colleagues, you know, don't think that we should supplement in the way we have, which is like, you know, people spending all this money on blue green algae powder, right? Which like we have we really don't know what that does, but they heard online that it's going to mm -hmm. make their hair grow thicker. And mm -hmm. so like they're spending all this money and yeah, you should be weary about that kind of, of supplementation, course, but... like mega doses, like 6,000 times the amount you would ever need of certain nutrients every single day, uh, you know, as that's like normal for the multivitamin supplement. Mm. Right. Mm. And so yeah. I think that's, I, I hope, right. That, that those are the, types of supplementation routines that they are criticizing. And many of those, I mean, there's very, very little oversight, very little regulatory framework to, 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 to restrict what people can sell you to put into your body. Um, and that, and that is a good thing, but it's also a bad thing, right? Like, and I think we have to have these nuanced conversations because I, I'm sure you, I mean, you and I fall into the alternative view category right like we we I don't guess. want the government uh, look the oh, way we eat the way right, we eat is an extraordinarily yeah. um Personal. outlier case right and so you know we don't want the government to tell us oh you can't have that blue green algae you can't have spirulina you know you you right. turmeric needs to be of a certain you know curcumin content to be able to mm -hmm. solve guess what like Turmeric root would be extraordinarily expensive if the government were to regulate it because that's what happens, right? Like, and so you want the government to stay out of it to some extent, but yeah, as a, the other side of that coin is like, you know, you can sell anything to anybody within reason. And, and of course, like there are certain things and, and, you know, good manufacturing practices and certifications that you can do. And that's, that's the, the big picture is, is when we look at it, we go through, you know, and, and I, you know, we test raw materials when they were, arrive at the facilities. We, we test batches as they're mixed. We test final uh, um, products when it's finished, and then we send it out to a third party to test it again, right? And, and we do that because it's the right thing to do. And then we do other certifications like organic when possible, you know, but, but again, none of that stuff really matters at the end of the day, because if you can't trust the people who are creating it, I mean, and, and I see your, it, yeah. your, well, it your matters, question, but so. well, it well, does matter at the end of the day, but yeah, there's no, there's no organic standard for our algae oil. So we can't put an organic I on what you're saying. our, uh, so it's like these rules yeah. where it's like, yeah. But guess what? Those are th those are as clean of ingredients as possible. They're tested four times in the process, right? And and so the standard by which we operate is like, is this good enough for my kids, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I have a partner, Matt Fraser, is a New York Times bestselling author, and and you know, when we go to bed at night, you know, I mean, my wife has taken our supplements through three pregnancies. Mm -hmm. The the level of um, uh, severity, right? Like the, the stakes are so high when yes. a woman is pregnant, like, right. and especially you're not going to take as, any chances. Yeah. Someone yeah. as neurotic mm -hmm. as me. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Or when yeah. I think about what I give to my kids, like it doesn't. So anyway, I, that's not something we can stamp on the bottle, but what I would say is like, you know, do your research into, um, who is the company. And if you can't find out, who is the company, right? Mm -hmm. Like who's actually running the company? Like, yeah, it's probably a faceless conglomerate. And those are right. probably not the, the things that you want to be consuming, right? I mean, and to some extent, that's it, not possible in all cases, but 
That's the thing that yeah. I look for, frankly. Yeah. Because right? that's no. The if you can find standard. a human, yes, and and they're, if that's what they're feeding their children, like that is the highest standard. And I'm sure yeah. there's there are a lot of uh, vegan supplements out there now. I mean, there's just a lot like, compared to when you started. It's like I I don't know how I don't know if some have come and gone. I don't know if they're all in the U.S. But if you just if you just Google you know that you'll you'll see there's a lot more than there were when you started. But how do you know? How do you know? And that's kind of what you're telling. Well, and then the other thing I was telling you is that um, earlier is that the, one of the reasons I loved your company right off the bat was because I could tell. I mean, you make it pretty obvious that you you that there's concern. There's con like a true concern, not just a you know greenwashing or whitewashing, whatever you want to call it, um, for the product and for for the people and that are taking it and for the environment and for everything else. It just it just comes across. It doesn't have to be written in your mission statement. So. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think if you are looking for any product in any company that that's if you can ever find that, like if you can pretty much go to Patagonia's website and tell that they're not going to do something, you know, they wouldn't have polyester in their shirt. for Well, maybe they do. Actually, I'm not sure about that, but they'll try to be as biodegradable as possible. Like they'll they'll do as much as they can to make it. And that's kind of how I feel about your company, like to help the environment, to help people. It just feels that way. You just get a sense of things. Not that companies yeah. can't lie, but I don't think that you can lie that much. <laughs> so anyway, well, um, can you can you talk? Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I just going to add, you know, like, um, and you you can tell, but also doesn't have to be like. I, I think the companies that you want to support make it easy to 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 understand that, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so you know, for our um, uh, blood testing service, like. In the package, you know, my, my cell phone is printed in the insert that goes in wow. there so that people can call me or text me. And like, I regularly get emails and like, wow. and that's not that's, because that's I amazing. want to do customer <laughs> yeah. service. It's, it's because like, if something goes wrong, and I'm really proud to say like, most people don't take you up on it. Like maybe yeah. most people think that it's fake or something. I don't know. Yeah. I don't get that many calls. But I do on occasion, I ask them what they think and I, and I, I want to hear from them. I want to hear yeah. what role our products play in their life. I want to hear what problems hmm. they're trying to solve, what I can hmm. do better. Like, and, and I think that's just, you know, kind of, it, it, maybe it's rare, but like it's out there. And I think that if you, if you start yeah, engaging right. with a company and, and, you know, they're, people are willing to like talk to you on the phone, for instance, like it goes, it goes a long way. It so. goes a very long way. Anyway, I'm sorry, I cut, I, I no, cut no, you no, off. No. I know I, we're about out of time, but yeah, well, ahead. I just wanted to, um, just because there's a couple of things that are really important to me anyway. And that is um, like you talk about net zero emission shipping and net zero emission production. And I'm just wondering is how do you do that? Is it like a circular economy kind of a, or, you know, closed loop kind of production or is it, that you're donating in a way that is offsetting carbon. Yeah, it's 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 buying carbon offsets. So it's you know, what I would say is um we we look at it in a few different ways. Um first off, we look at it in terms of our packaging, mm -hmm. which you know, is really really difficult to do. We probably spend way too much money on it. Um but it's part of our ethics uh you know, to use um, biodegradable or compostable bags instead it's of, huge. you know, plastic bottles or even glass bottles with plastic lids, which is what we used in the past. Um, and so when we look at those steps that we can take, and then obviously trucking and shipping is a huge part of it. So we buy carbon offsets there. Okay. And then lastly, we plant trees for every purchase as well. And so we try to do as much as we can, you know, it's certainly net zero. I like to think it's, it's a net positive because then we're planting mm, trees right. on top of it. Um, and certainly not contributing to, you know, landfills is really important to us. It's really important. And those containers you have now for the, for the supplements rather than like that, you can just refill that. What are they made from the. That's glass. So, oh, glass? so that's yeah. obviously a recyclable glass. Um, and uh, so when you first purchase um, uh, our complement vitamins, we, we send a little glass jar. Um, yeah. And, and that's then, expensive. Yeah. That's and then every, every, yeah. every refill after that comes in 
a compostable pouch mm-hmm. that you can just pour in and, and yeah, refill. I just that loved way. that, honestly. And I love this idea of the nutrition, the customized nutrition. I haven't gotten to start that yet, but I will when I get back in July because I'm I think that's brilliant. Who wants to go to the cool. doctor and get the get three and I don't know how you do it with just a poke instead of like three vials of blood, like if that's something uh you can teach the doctors, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, I, you know, we can talk a little bit more about that, but what I'd say is, you know, um, you've been really generous to, to highlight our company in a really positive light, but, you know, again, our, our mission is to strengthen, you know, the plant-based people around us, you know, and cause like I said, the strength of our vegan movement really relies on, you know, the individuals in it. Right. Mm -hmm. And if we have a bunch of people who are going to the doctor and they're being convinced out of this lifestyle because they have Mm -hmm. this issue or that issue, um, that's not good for us. Right. That's not good for us as a community. And so Mm -hmm. whether you check out our um, products uh, or that blood testing service, I would just encourage people to engage actively in their health because there's so much you can learn, you know, and in most cases, you know, it's an unpleasant conversation with your doctor. That's why we provide this service. But like most doctors will will be able to prescribe uh, some of these tests, you know, and you can get mm-hmm. that peace of mind to know, you know, where are your omega levels, vitamin D, B12, iron, you know, if you just double check those pieces, you know, you can address and prevent a lot of issues. I mean, my, my I was low in vitamin D. I mean, it's funny for me to admit because, you know, I sell this stuff and take it every day. You're not but, outside enough. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, yeah. it doesn't get yeah. above 30 degrees where I, I live know. during the winter, know. you know. And you're and not near we, the equator. You know, all those things matter. Yeah. And funny enough, uh, so vitamin D is synthesized on your skin through uh, exposure to sunlight. And mm-hmm. then it is reabsorbed into your bloodstream from your skin. So if you go shower directly after being at the beach, you will wash off much of that vitamin D before it that. goes into your, your bloodstream. So those are the types of things where, but again, like you don't have huh. to be so crazy about it. Yeah. The fact is like we're in boxes all day. Your car's yeah. a box, the restaurant's yeah. a box, right. your home's a box, your office is a box. Mm-hmm. You're not getting, and, and by the way, even if you were outside, you're wearing clothes. Yeah. We're not running around naked in the Serengeti yeah. like our ancestors. Yeah. And so our yeah. exposure, so anyway, I just, I say that because like we have a, uh, uh, a mental health crisis in this country and I can tell you, I did not feel like myself in the start of the year through hmm. February. I did. When your I D was low, your vitamin D was low. Was, in oh. hindsight, now I can put two and two together oh. and be like, you know what? Wow, that, that's like, very I thought it was, interesting. I thought it was burnout. I thought it was, you know, all sorts of different three kids issues. under four. <laughs> that too, you know, um, and and you know, I got this test back really low in vitamin D took higher doses of vitamin D for about two weeks. And whether or not it's a placebo effect or psychosomatic or whatever, like really, I felt a lot better, right? Mm. And now we're going into summer and I'll probably taper off that vitamin D because yeah. I will be outside with my yeah. shirt off. And, yeah. you know, yeah. and so I just think actively engaging, whether it's through our service, Everly Well, you know, your doctor, like it doesn't matter, you know, we're not here for the money. Like um, uh, we just want people to, to be knowledgeable about this so that they can fix or prevent these issues in the first place. Well, I just, I wanted to say it's really important because usually when you go to the doctor and you get blood tests, I'll do, you know, a, a number of tests, but I don't think those tests are typically among them. You don't get your vitamin D, you don't get your, um, any omegas. I don't think those are ever tested. I don't know if I've ever had a test yeah. from the doctor that measure those things. So if people think that, well, there's nothing wrong because their doctor never said anything wrong, that doesn't mean they've been testing for it. So I am yeah. I think that's huge. And I'm, I'm, I think I would really encourage everyone to get those tests. I don't, even if you, whether you eat meat, don't eat meat, whatever, it's good to know what your levels are for all sorts of reasons. Well, um, okay. So I'm, I'll leave you with one last question just because I know we are out of time, but, and we're talking about you're feeling better because you're vitamin D and, and all that. But I'm just wondering, does it like, um, do you feel, how do you feel 
about yourself or do you think you feel better about yourself doing work that is meaningful or impactful? I mean, how does that make you feel about yourself at the end of the day? Do you think it affects your happiness level in any way? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd have to imagine it does, right? Because, um, you know, but that said, um, I've never uh, um, done anything else. So I can't compare it, uh, you know. Well, because... that's not true. You've only been doing this. What do you mean you've never done anything else? Other I mean, than I've, work I've always you're... lived in a way that, um, you know, I believe to those much is given, much should be expected. And mm -hmm. I've been really blessed um, in my life with just, uh, you know, great fortune. And so I've always worked to mm. um, give back as much as possible. And so, you know, every business that I've started um, and, you know, for, I guess, maybe my senior year, I worked for a think tank um, mm -hmm. and that was, you know, while I had a research grant and I was essentially an office assistant and, you know, but that research grant was focused on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and I was determined to find world peace, right? Like I just, you know, and after that it was focusing on education. And I still to this day believe education is our single greatest weapon to solve most of the intractable ills that we face mm -hmm. as a society, right? Obesity and malnutrition, all this stuff that we've been Depends talking about. Depends what they're teaching. Also, <laughs> Well, yeah, sure. Good, good education, right? Good Effective education. education true. No, but look, a highly, education. a highly educated populace, I believe, no, for sure. will suffer from less racism, less anti-Semitism, less yeah. Yeah, all of the of isms, course. Yeah. right? Um, right. And so, you know, and then obviously more recently, my focus has been on nutrition because I, you know, I think it's one of the great um, accessible levers that we can pull. Right. Like it's it's right there. You know, um, if we didn't subsidize eggs, like the tomato would be just as cheap. You know, like mm -hmm. there yeah. there is so many ways that we can through education, um, mm -hmm. through better uh, food policy, um, you know, through better environmental and agricultural practices. You know, we, we can have a tremendous impact. So anyway, that's a, another soapbox to answer your simple question. But. Yeah, well, of course. Like I, I can't. Um, I, I would encourage everybody if it's within reach, and and I think it always is with a little bit of creative thinking, mm -hmm. um, to find a way, you know, to align your your passion um, with some sort of greater good, um, and you know, a way to get paid, right? Because yeah. like, if if you can figure out how to put food on the table for your family while doing something that you enjoy. Um, which is overall accretive to society. If, if it's if it's giving back and making the world a better place or helping people, like you're, you're going to feel better going to bed sure. at night. Yeah. Like, I absolutely yeah. guarantee that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, that's that's actually a great note to quit on because I think that's good inspiration for everyone because it, it's the trifecta what you just described, and I think that's uh, what maybe everyone would aspire to have. You know help the world, help your family, um, be happy doing it, be passionate. So it, it's what we would all hope for. So, well, congratulations. I just really want to say that to you and to Matt as well. I know he's a co-founder. Um, I don't know him personally, but I, I know his book. I've got his book. <laughs> See him every once in a while on different things. So um, congratulations to you for, for what you've done. And keep going. We need you. We need you to be out there doing it, all the good you're doing. Well. Thank you so much for the kind words and, and for this platform, this opportunity to to share our mission mm. and, and all the work we are doing. So really grateful mm. for that. All right. Well, I'm going to track you down now that I know where you guys are living up in Vail. So. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have a lot of visitors up there. All right. We've well, take care. very popular. Yeah, I know. I have two down here. So. Yeah. Right, Matt, take care. Say hello to everybody for me and uh, we'll stay in touch.